everyone, and welcome back to this edition of NBC News. I'm Adam Little. And I'm Ben Haller. Hey, Adam, you notice anything different about me recently? Hmm, not that I can think of. Oh, Ben, did you get a haircut? I sure did, and I think it looks pretty nice. Yeah, we'll go with that. Maybe you should look into this new student-run haircutting business. Ava Hartalendi has the story. Mason High School junior Aaron Spears likes to take matters into his own hands. So when he couldn't find a good stylist, he figured he'd learn it on his own. After many hours of practice and many YouTube tutorials, Spears has not only mastered cutting his own hair, but has become a go-to stylist for many of his friends. So what it encouraged me to start cutting hair, my dad, he always cut my hair. And, you know, he's a busy man, so whenever I wanted to, you know, get a cut, you know, look fresh, um, he would always be like, you know, I can't do it tonight. You know, it was just that inconvenience that I was like, you know what, why don't I just do it myself? You know, you can learn anything off of social media, anything. So I learned off YouTube. Um, shout out 360GZ. He uh, makes tutorials on how to cut hair. And so that was like one of my main, um, main go-tos to learn how to cut hair. And then just practicing on myself and my uh, siblings and family. The decision to allow someone to cut your hair can be a very personal choice, but several Mason students can attest to Aaron's skill after booking an appointment with 513 Cuts. Getting my hair cut by a high schooler was a little nerve-wracking the first time. Uh, I saw on his uh, Instagram channel that he does a pretty good job cutting hair, but it's always that first time coming in and not knowing what to expect really. But when I came in the first time, it was actually really good. I was really happy with what um, he was able to do for me. And now I come here every couple weeks whenever I need a haircut and he gets the job done. It's just a lot nicer coming here. I'm really good friends with Aaron because I played football with him. So it's a lot easier just to talk to him. And uh, like with my other barber, I wasn't as close with them. So it's just nice to come in here and be able to laugh and have fun getting my hair cut. I would recommend Aaron, aka 513 Cuts, because he's the best in Mason High School and in the area. And you know, if you want some cool designs in your hair, you'll throw it in. And I'm gonna come back, I think, every couple weeks and throw a new design in. When you're with someone random, it's like kind of awkward, but when you're with like your friends in the back and someone you know from school, you can kind of just chill out, have fun, have a good time. Advice I would give to people that want to explore opportunities like this is, I'd say just go for it because, you know, I, I kind of took the chance, you know, I, you know, I messed my hair up, but you know, in the end, like, look at me now, like, um, it's paying off right now. So just, you know, just face it and go for it. Despite being a student barber, Spears is able to use his unique talent to give quality haircuts to his customers, always leaving them feeling confident and looking fresh. I'm Ava Hurtalendi, NBC News. You know, Adam, maybe you were right. I think I know where I'm going for my next haircut. That sounds like a great idea. With Valentine's Day just passing and it being the season of love, you've got to look great for that special someone. Indeed I do. And a lot of people are single or even if you're taken, it's important to notice the great qualities and even the not so great tendencies of your partner. Luke Thomas hit the halls to find some of the red flags and bad habits that are keeping MHS students single. Let's check it out. Everyone knows the phrase, no one's perfect. And with recent social media trends, this has been brought back into the light. It seems that we're a little too quick to judge on everyone's red flags. So I hit the halls to see if you'll embrace your own. What's your biggest red flag? Uh, probably being a terrible black hole leader. Ian, Ian, come here. This, this guy right here, worst black hole leader ever. History of Mason. Yeah. Don't say that, man, don't no, say that. No, it's true, that's my red flag. I'm depressed over the Bengals loss. I'm never gonna get over it and never love anything else as much as I did the Bengals again. What is a red flag about yourself? Oh, uh, I'm too small. Yeah, same. Well, so that should be your answer, too. Uh, I have too many to pick. Uh... <laughs> what is your red flag about yourself? Oh my gosh, I have 18 nutcrackers at home. <laughs> 18? I have 18. What number did you get to where you're just like, oh God, I got a problem, or like, this is too many? 18. Okay. <laughs> See, we don't want to waste a whole footage of film hey, just fine. on you. Huh? What is a red flag about yourself? <laughs> huh? A red flag. Huh? A red flag. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh I think I'm the best per looking person in the room, and if you disagree, you're kind of wrong. Uh, I got tender knees, bro. So your tender knee right there, man? No, I'm sorry about that. Hope you get better. Oh, this is love. 
What's your red flag? I would say my red flag is that I'm too good at greeting. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. I'm not allowed. I'm getting fired. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, um, are you gonna ask? The What's question? your biggest red flag? Um, I would say being a cat person. How many cats do you have? Uh, I have three, but at one point I had six. But they died. <laughs> so. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I went back to my ex eight times. Eight times? Are you guys back together right now? No. Ah, looking for a nine? <laughs> No, no, never. <laughs> and mine is that I got TikTok famous once. How many views? 2.7 million. Dang, what? <laughs> What's the secret? <laughs> oh, couldn't be me. I know the entire Fall of Jake Paul lyrics. <laughs> Give us a little taste. Yeah, yeah. My red flag is I'm a backseat driver. Everybody at the school does not know how to drive, and I will voice my opinion. What's your biggest red flag? Car accidents. Ah, that's not good. No. How many? Uh, my parents know about one, but I've had three. <laughs> you didn't tell them? No, and I hit a mailbox. <laughs> I've never had a bad hair day. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> biggest red flag? Um, Probably that I flirt with too many of my friends. That's not that good, but... <laughs> You're 6'6"? Six, six. <laughs> What's your biggest red flag? Get off your tippy toes. I bring an iPad to school every day. <laughs> so you're like, iPad kid. Yeah. <laughs> you're the iPad kid? I am. I play games on it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> At least you're not doing schoolwork. <laughs> no. That would be bad. <laughs> it's a good thing people don't come with printed warning labels. Because after hearing some of your guys' red flags, I would definitely think twice. I'm Luke Thomas, NBC News. Ding. Are you tired of wearing the same old boring clothing every day? If that's the case, come on down to the Common Zone. Open every day during lunch, except for Thursdays. The Common Zone is filled with many options to have you looking fly every single day. From sweatshirts to t-shirts to jackets, the Common Zone has clothes for every occasion. Come on down to the Common Zone for your Mason spirit needs. The Common Zone, your one-stop spirit shop. I'm Cece and I'm a member of Hope Squad here to discuss setting boundaries. When having mental health conversations with your peers, it's crucial to set boundaries for your own safety as well as others. Everyone has different boundaries, so it's best to communicate your boundaries to ensure you and your peers feel safe and comfortable when having such important conversations. These boundaries could look like clarifying that you don't want to be hugged or simply reminding them that you eventually need to put your phone down. Make sure to clearly define your boundaries and of course, respect the boundaries of others. Comet Country, I'm Abby Samuel. Let's take a look at what's going on in the sports world here at MHS. It may not be March Madness when the rec basketball players take the court on Sunday afternoons, but there's definitely some madness now with the help of a popular social media account. Amelia Guerin has the story. Basketball has always been a thing here at Mason High School, but this year the stakes are higher than ever, fueled by a spirited social media presence that has the players not only wanting to leave their mark on the court, but also add in some style points so they can win the social media game as well. I got into rec basketball, I think, fifth grade. I was just bored. My parents were looking for something for me to do, um, so they just signed me up, and then I kind of met some of my friends that I still play with today. I think the level of competition has definitely gotten better because I know freshman and sophomore year our team kind of ran the league. 
week. Um, so now it's definitely gotten a little more competitive and everyone's trying a little harder. Maybe that is just due to count. Maybe just more people are playing now. Um, but I think it's definitely gotten a lot more competitive and people are just more, having more fun with it, which I think is the goal at the end of the day, just to enjoy it and have fun playing basketball. I just think the competition is just much better than if I were to play for the school. Um, we practice seven days a week, twice a week. We have a morning practice before school. And then right after school, we have to sprint all the way down here. And we get a like, thousand shots up a day. A thousand shots? Yeah. yeah. Thousand shots? A um, lot of trash talking. I think that's essential. Uh, we also prepare by, I mean, we practice, practice pretty hard, but we also just goof around, spend time with each other. Most of the kids who play rec basketball just love playing in the league. Whether it's for fun, sweet jerseys and team names, or just staying in shape, rec basketball checks all the boxes. But now, new Instagram media coverage has the rec hoopsters checking an account called Official MCC Rec League to watch interviews, see highlights, and most importantly, see how their team is ranked. Oh, I think it's a great addition this year. It gives us like something to track to, something to look forward to every Wednesday when those rankings come out and we're usually number one. Um, I feel like it's made it a lot more competitive. I feel like, you know, people are taking the games a lot more serious, even though it's just wreck. I mean, I take it very seriously, obviously, because, you know, this is my life. But, yeah, I just feel like it's made it a lot more fun. It's giving me something to look forward to on a Sunday, you know. Zero count has made such a huge difference because, obviously, we're all competitive with each other and we all know, like, who's winning and who's losing. But when there's an account that's kind of tracking it and there's power rankings and MVPs and player of the week. It's just, you know, the extra chip on your shoulder to play better and be like, oh, maybe we'll get on the account this week, maybe we'll be player of the week. Um, it just makes it a lot more fun. No one knows who runs this account, but two senior interviewers have been major influencers in their growing fame. These two correspondents for official MCC Rec League have even changed their own schedule to cover games and populate the account with the most up-to-date rec basketball news. Um, it's really been an experience. Uh, truly, it's, I mean, it's really fun. It's we take it more as something kind of like comedic, like just seeing our friends play and then turning it into something that we can all look back to in a little bit or post to everyone who maybe didn't see the games or wasn't there. Um, I know both of us played basketball, so it's really fun to see our own friends, especially when they fail, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just like something to do on the weekends. So. Well, you know, all the games are usually on a Sunday, and so I have the option to either do my anatomy homework or come to the games. So obviously it's coming the games. Mason Rec basketball players have always loved taking the court every Sunday afternoon. And now, with a team of social media influencers bringing attention to these weekend warriors, there's a lot more on the line than just who is ahead at the end of the game. I'm Amelia Guerin, NBC Sports. There's a lot of athletes here at Mason that pursue unique individual sports. Nav Singh is one of those athletes and he is climbing his way to the top, literally. He is a rock climber here at MHS and Brooke Pacciola has his story. It's not uncommon for Mason students to try rock climbing at places like Lifetime or the Community Center. Nav Singh started out no differently, but unlike others, he became hooked onto this incredibly grueling and strenuous sport. But despite the setbacks and difficulties, he has committed countless of hours to practice and achieve his rock climbing goals. Rock climbing is like 95% failure, and then like 5% is a really good feeling when you actually send it. Sending is like when you get it. And uh, once I felt that, I was like, all right, I'm hooked. And so I, I was like a little into wrestling and then at that point I was like no I want to be a rock climber. It's been getting a lot bigger the sport itself so there's a lot of content online and I started just watching all the YouTube videos and everything and that's how I just like got super into rock climbing. So in bouldering um, which is like power based and strength based there's a grading scale so it starts like with V0 and then it goes up V1, V2 and uh, it's like the higher the number the harder it gets so right now the hardest thing in the world is like V16, V17, and just this last year, I finally broke double digits. I got a V10, and so that's like a really big milestone, especially for being like only like two, one to two years into climbing, so that felt great. It's like with any sport, right? So that you're always gonna hit plateaus, and so it's that mental game like, oh, what am I doing wrong? Like, and it's, you're always gonna doubt yourself a little bit, but it's just, cause like I said, climbing is like mostly failure, right? Especially if you're trying to work into like more difficult climbing so it's just dealing with that failure for climbing this is like all the plastic this is fake holes right but this is all training for the outdoors this is a place called New River Gorge and 
and uh, I, I traveled there and it was outdoor bouldering and it was it's so beautiful there's like a river running down there's like bridges and stuff and uh, basically just like lived in a tent for a few days and got to climb all the stuff outdoors so that was probably the most fun I ever had when it comes to climbing I'm dreaming big like I really want to be a world champion or go to the Olympics and I'm doing everything that's in my power to get there like I put in big out like big amount of hours every week uh, it's hard juggling it with school and everything and all my other responsibilities but that's my goal I want to either go to the Olympics or get a medal at world championships what started out as a form of recreational exercise has now become a lifestyle for Nav after only a few years of practice he has already accomplished many personal milestones and doesn't plan on stopping there he not only has big dreams for his future but the dedication that it takes to make them possible I'm Brooke Pacciola NBC Sports last broadcast we brought back the popular game swap segment today Jenna Skidmore is testing the skills of some of Mason's most accomplished athletes let's skip over over to see how a Comet skipper can handle himself with a basketball instead of a jump rope. everyone and welcome back to Game Swap. You all know the drill. I'm here today with varsity basketball player Gabby Rosano and Comet Skippers member Erica Selica who are going to switch spots and put their knowledge of a different sport to the test. So are you guys ready? Oh yeah, I'm so ready. Yeah? Let's get to it. I have played about, I think, three games of basketball. Three. An indoor hoop that goes like on the door frame. On the door frame, so basically like professional level experience. Professional level experience. The girls' varsity team's been doing really well this year, so do you think you can stack up to that? No. At least he's honest. We're gonna start with some rebounding. <laughs> I don't think I can dribble. You can go in slow motion. Slow motion. The ball does not move in slow motion. Oh, snap. <laughs> I'm amazing at basketball. I, you're on the team. I'm on the team? Oh, like, oh, just a little spin. We all need a little spin in our lives. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Spin, yeah. Oh, oh, so close. It's crazy how you get it in the net like almost every time. Catch it, take a dribble, shoot. Yeah, see, you got it. You hit the board. I hit the board. Maybe one day it will go in. One day, not today. Oh, shoot, that's not hard. <laughs> I didn't think you'd try to stop me. Oh, no. Oh, ah. shoot. You did the spin. spin the spin. I wasn't expecting the spin, Jenna. Eric didn't do so hot on the basketball court, but let's see how Gabby compares as she attempts to learn the ropes. Literally. So I know this is kind of your home court, but now it's a new sport. So how do you how do you think you're gonna do? I think I'll be okay with like the simple stuff, but I don't know about the, the extra tricks and stuff. Like for that? that? Like that? Much. Yeah. Lever and elbow. Yeah, elbow to elbow. What are you doing? <laughs> not, uh, You're not doing elbow to elbow. Cross better. Oh. There you go. Okay. See how to rub it in the knee? Oh. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. There you go. You have to jump that rope as fast as possible. Is this even like a rope? I can't even so see the rope when you're doing that. Not there, I'm just making it. Oh. <laughs> Disney Channel. There. Try it out, try it. Oh no. Really easy? Okay. Oh no. <laughs> it's not gonna work out. Right? Oh, oh, almost! Oh, oh, yeah! Whoa! How many can you do in a row? I'm like a side swing, like before. Okay. You want to release it, spin it around, and catch it. Catch oh, it. closer! Catch it. You should have grabbed the handle. There and you go! So, yeah, the jump! 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 
Finish strong. Finish strong. There you go. <laughs> Finish strong. Yay! Yeah! There we go. <laughs> All that's, right. That was that's one third of it. painful to watch. <laughs> Our athletes seem to have a great time today, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you both again so much for coming out and being really great sports. Well, that wraps up this edition of Game Swap. Be sure to visit us on Instagram at we.r.mbc to vote on which sports you want to see swapped next. I'm Jenna Skidmore, NBC Sports. It's great to have the Game Swap segment back. I'm looking forward to seeing what Jenna has in store for our next broadcast. Now let's send it back to Adam and Ben at the news desk. Well, that wraps up this edition of NBC News. As always, we're committed to bringing you the news of students making the news. We couldn't have done it without the hard work of our fantastic crew. From everyone in front of and behind the camera, I'm Adam Little. And I'm Ben Haller. We'll see you next time.